I'm Blaine Lewis, and in this video I'll be presenting a new interaction technique called KeyMap. KeyMap is a keyboard shortcut visualization designed to help improve keyboard shortcut vocabulary by taking advantage of Norman's mapping. This is research I performed at the University of Waterloo while completing my master's degree, as well as the University of Canterbury while, perform while doing a research assistantship. The idea behind KeyMap is extremely simple. Rather than showing keyboard shortcuts hidden away in linear menus, instead we display them directly on top of the keys of a virtual keyboard. But before I get too much into KeyMap, I first want to talk about why we should care about keyboard shortcuts in the first place. And the biggest reason is that keyboard shortcuts are fast. We don't have to home back and forth between the keyboard and the mouse, and they're not constrained by the steering law or fits law. The mouse stays in the work area, it doesn't bounce back and forth between what you're working on and the toolbar. You just keep working on what you're working on. But the problem is that nobody uses them. Only 19% of Firefox users use Control F to invoke the find command. But why don't people use them? Because I just said they were fast. The reasons for that are psychological biases and lack of design. The two psychological biases that are important here are the productivity bias, where people are unwilling to sacrifice productivity now for productivity in the future, and satisficing where people are unwilling to, or where people have a threshold of good enough when they make a decision. So they look at linear menus and think, oh, that's good enough. And they never even consider keyboard shortcuts as an option. But the two reasons I really wanna focus on in this talk are keyboard shortcuts are hard to remember and they're hard to discover. They're hard to remember because we don't design for it. When you look at the information we give for remembering a keyboard shortcut from a linear menu, we give the li the label, like undo, and the keyboard shortcut, like command Z. We don't tell you where on the keyboard it is or what shortcuts it's nearby. There's really not much useful information to remember what keyboard shortcut it actually is. But keyboard shortcuts are also hard to discover, both implicitly and explicitly. Implicitly, when they're displayed in linear menus, we're scanning on the left side of the commands, but not looking all the way over on the right to look at the keyboard shortcuts. But they're also explicitly not very discoverable. For example, on toolbars, you have to hover the buttons to see what a keyboard shortcut is. And then sometimes they're even hidden behind keyboard shortcuts themselves. So you have to press command slash to open the panel on the right here. There has been some research into how we can approach some of these problems. For example, Grossman et al. looked at um, how we can change linear menus to help us remember shortcuts by using audio cues or even delays. Expose HK introduces the idea of rehearsal, where novices and experts perform keyboard shortcuts the same, but maybe novices with the visualization. And Hotkey Palette looks at putting, um, putting your windows on top of a virtual keyboard similar to how KeyMap puts command labels on top of a virtual keyboard. The idea we take advantage of in KeyMap is called Norman's mapping. It is the idea that the controls that we use should be aligned with the effect they have. So for example, if we have a stove, if the controls are aligned in a line, but the burners are in a square, that's not naturally mapped because it's unclear how I can map from the dial to the burner. Do the dials act in a clockwise manner where the top left is where we go around from the top left? Or maybe clockwise where we go the other way, or counterclockwise where we go the other way? Maybe we go in lines where we do the first row and then the second row. It's unclear without adding some extra visualization. However, when you arrange the dials in a square, it becomes immediately obvious which dials control which burners. That isn't the case with keyboard shortcuts right now, because there's no natural mapping between how we enter a shortcut and how it's displayed in the linear menus. So what does Norman's mapping look like for keyboard shortcuts? And the answer to that is key map. Rather than showing keyboard shortcuts hidden away in linear menus, instead we show them directly on top of keys on a virtual keyboard. You can see that each command is displayed on a key, as well as the actual key letter behind that. And we also took advantage of other design principles or design ideas like displaying the nubs that you see, the physical nubs you see on your keyboard right now on F and J, and displaying those on top of the virtual keyboard that we display so that you have a physical landmark to help you remember where keyboard shortcuts are. Keymap works very simple. You press and hold a keyboard shortcut modifier like command, and then the keyboard shortcuts appear on the screen after a short delay. 
then you complete your selection just by entering the rest of the keyboard shortcut. If you wanted to enter F, uh, find, then you would just press F and the command would be executed and the menu would disappear. Keymap is always displayed in the bottom left, and this makes keyboard shortcuts a first-class citizen, so you can always see that they're there, and now they can become a default learning mechanism rather than kind of an aside. For experts, there's no difference because the short delay isn't even noticed. You never see keymap in the first place because you can enter a shortcut faster than the delay executes. And for very novices, what they can do is they can actually click through the keyboard shortcuts. Like they can click on command and then click on F to enter find. And that helps them learn at least some knowledge and then they can use that knowledge to learn keyboard shortcuts in the future. There's, a, there's two principles behind keymap. The first one is the idea of cue target association, which should help memory. Um, when we have to remember a keyboard shortcut, we're performing a queued recall process where we have a queue, which is the visualization or display, and a target, which is the entering of the actual shortcut. And in linear menus, the queue is the linear menu and the target is the shortcut. But there's no association here. They don't even look visually similar. So this association is very weak for the current state of the world. But for keymap, we can look at those two images and it's immediately obvious that keymap has a strong association with the way you enter it. The second key principle behind keymap is the idea of spatial memory. With keymap, you can tell that some shortcuts are aligned beside each other semantically. If I look at this linear menu here, I can't tell that cut, copy, and paste are actually beside each other on the keyboard, but keymap makes that extremely obvious, and it makes sense that some things should be semantically and physically grouped together. Um, other things like find and replace are also placed near each other. We wanted to compare keymap to the state of the art, and in this case, we said that the state of the art was expose HK. I mentioned expose HK earlier, and the way it works is when a user presses and holds a keyboard shortcut modifier, the linear menus all appear at once, and then the user waits or looks for the proper shortcut to enter and finishes it by pressing the corresponding letter key, and that completes the selection. And now a novice and a user or an, and an expert are doing the same action. We had three hypotheses for our experiment. Um, we thought that keymap key users would remember more shortcuts, they would incidentally learn more shortcuts, and they would also have faster practice selection times than expose HK. Our experiment consisted of two different tasks. The first task was a selection task where they practiced to learn a set of keyboard shortcuts. They could enter it using guided mode where they can see the visualization. And they could also enter it just using a keyboard shortcut without the visualization. And they can also use the mouse based interaction where they click through the menu. There was also the recall task where users were given the same set of commands that they'd already seen, but in this case, they couldn't use any of the visualizations and they just had to enter shortcuts. And here we can see user enter shortcuts, but there's not much to see here because they don't get to see the visualization. Our experiment design was between subjects. We compared Expose HK to Keymap and we recruited 98 Mechanical Turk crowd workers. They each were assigned 13 commands distributed over a zip pane distribution to make some commands more frequent than others, just like in the real world for commands like undo. Participants started by performing the selection task where they first practiced some commands and they did six blocks with 25 selections each. And then they continued on to the recall task where they entered all 13 commands and then also five that they hadn't seen before to test incidental learning. After 24 hours passed, we wanted to test their long-term memory and we invited the participants back to perform the retention task where they did the same thing as the recall task. We found that keymap improved short-term recall. There was a significant difference between keymap and expose HK of one command where keymap users remembered 10 and expose HK users remembered nine. Um, this plot is a violin plot, but for discrete distributions. We can see that on the right for high frequency commands, keymap users and expose HK users both remember about the same number of commands. But as we start to go towards low frequency commands, this is where we start to see a difference where keymap users are remembering more shortcuts than expose HK users are. We also found a significant difference in long-term retention, which is what's really important because we want users to remember session after session what the shortcuts are. 
and we found that keymap users remembered 10 commands on median and expose HK users remembered only 5.5. This is a really big difference of four and a half shortcuts out of only 13 possible. And this is really important. If we each knew four and a half more shortcuts, then that would be really impactful for our daily lives. And we see the same patterns of differences in frequency. We also found that KeyMap likely creates incidental learning. Across the entire experiment, KeyMap users were able to remember 19 commands that they'd never seen before, whereas exposed HK users were only able to remember six. And this is also a statistically significant difference. We didn't find any evidence that KeyMap is faster than exposed HK. Both mechanisms gave us uh, selection times of around 3.2 to 3.4 seconds. So to conclude our experiment, we found that KeyMap users remember more shortcuts than exposed HK users, and they were also able to incidentally learn more shortcuts. However, we weren't able to find any evidence that KeyMap users have faster practice selection times. As part of this work, we also built a Chrome extension. This lets you use it today. Um, it's, an, it's open source and available in the Chrome Web Store, and you can download it and use it with common applications like Overleaf. The cool thing about KeyMap is that it's a direct augmentation or replacement of current command entry techniques. So it just sits in the bottom left unobtrusively, and you can just use it. Here is an example of me using it to write our paper in Overleaf. I am editing the abstract and adding bold and italics to it. And KeyMap appears for shortcuts that maybe I don't know. Uh, KeyMap works for two other applications, DynaList and Slack, but it's also open source, which means that if you want to add new command mappings to it, you can do that. Thank you for watching this talk. Um, today, I introduced KeyMap, which is a new interaction technique that takes advantage of Norman's mapping to improve shortcut vocabulary by using a novel keyboard visualization. If you want to learn more about the paper, um, or if you want to learn more about the interaction technique, please read the paper and also check out the Chrome extension. Um, the Chrome extension link is in the paper, but it's also available at my website, bladelewis.ca slash keymap. I'd also like to thank my co-authors, uh, especially Greg, who shares first co-authorship with me. And thank you for watching this talk.